Hey, friendo, Steve here. Welcome back to the channel. It's time for another Ask Wrestle Juice. You guys left a bunch of great questions, man. It was like 112 questions this week. A lot of questions. A lot of stuff going on, man. We got Rumble season coming up. We got WrestleMania coming up. And of course, Kazuchiko Kata. Where will he go? It's the news story of the week. And a lot of you asked about the Rainmaker. The Big Nick 94 says, with Okada being a free agent as of 1 January 31st, what is the best way to introduce him to main roster WWE? Or what can AEW really do to present him in a new light to their fans? So obviously the Rainmaker has uh, time already spent in AEW. Word on the street is, the dirt sheets are saying, that uh, because of his pre-existing relationship with AEW, given that he was there in October, sort of understanding the lay of the land and how their television operation works, uh, that AEW might have a leg up. However, also, WWE's making a strong pitch to him as well, given that, according to some people, Okada's always wanted to do a WrestleMania, which is right around the corner. So, I'm going to answer this question and not the question where I think Okada should go. I kind of feel like you all know where I think he should go. I mean, look, number one, I want the Rainmaker to be happy. I want him to go wherever he is happiest. But if you take that out of the equation and ask Steve here, where I would like to see him go, y'all know the answer to that one. <laughs> Anyways, but I'm going to answer the question as it is here from uh, uh, Nick. What's the best way to introduce him into main roster WWE? So imagine this, right? Like once he's free of his contract, you send some of those, some Jeremy Borash and his like high quality, you know, a uh, 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 film filmmaking team over to Japan and you film some really, really cool shit. You guys remember, you're not going to remember this. Remember in like NXT UK, what was the name of that outfit with uh, Tail Man and uh, Charlie Dempsey and the other guy, the, 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 the eye guy? That was Teo, man. And they filmed some really, really well done vignettes. They did the same thing with Ilya in NXT UK. They filmed some brilliant, beautiful vignettes. Very dramatic stuff, right? Some of the best stuff they've done. But it just went under the radar because nobody watched NXT UK. You do some of that stuff, but in Japan with Okada. You make him, and, and you film it like, I'm talking like the top line cameras, right? And you make him look like a million bucks. You do sort of like a pseudo mini documentary about the Rainmaker as a way to introduce him. Or you could do something along the lines of Shinsuke Nakamura, you know, uh, from now until Mania, he's like this menacing, you know, son of a bitch. He already ripped into Cody, sprayed him with the shit. And, uh, and he continues to cut a path to destruction and he offers like sort of an open challenge and Kazuchika Okada with his super over-the-top entrance answers that open challenge at WrestleMania, something like that. I don't know. I kind of feel like introducing him through some like really high-quality vignettes would be something that'd be really cool. They've been on point with their vignettes lately, and I feel like introducing him as like a big money attraction guy is the way to go. They haven't shied away from Shinsuke Nakamura using primarily you know, his, his native language, I think for Okada, you do the same thing. Um, and, and let the rest sort of handle itself. Yeah, man. I think, I think that high product, whatever it needs, he needs high production value. That's not exactly a W strong suit. When he debuted in a W in advance of the first forbidden door, he was wearing like sweatpants and a t-shirt. He just sort of came off as some other guy. I think they sort of were like, well, everybody's going to know. Everybody in the AEW crowd will know who he is. And there is sort of a difference there. Most people in AEW will know who he is. As opposed to WWE fans who, I don't know, 50 to 70% of the people probably won't know who he is or have never seen an Okada match before. So you need more of a presentation build. In AEW, it kind of feels more like a transfer, if anything. Kind of like Osprey. I mean, he's done stuff in AEW before as has Okada. So it kind of feels like, oh, he's just transferring over here from New Japan to AEW so they can sort of pick up where they left off. I don't know that they would do vignettes. It would just be like one day Excalibur would be like, oh, Rainmaker, he's going to have a match against Action Andretti on Rampage. And then he'll, he'll just be doing his thing there. I hope they would sort of 
hit the reset button on Okada if he ends up going to AEW. Like, hey, we're going to send like a real film crew, not Kenny Omega with a phone camera. We're going to send like a real film crew to Japan to film some cool shit with you and and some nice lenses, some good prime quality lenses. Uh, and uh, and then we'll air those in advance of your big debut. But the fact that we've got you is going to be a big, big deal as opposed to just, you know, he shows up one day and then you hear Excalibur read his resume, <laughs> which is probably what they're going to do if he shows up in AEW. Prove me wrong. Hey, AEW, prove me wrong. Make it cool, man. Make it cool. Anyways, that's what they can do. How can they present him new light? Like I said, just make him seem like a big deal. Do some vignettes. Do some cool shit. All right, next question. Now we've talked about Rainmaker. Man, <laughs> it'd be cool if he was at WrestleMania, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, all right, Nathan Spencer here says, why aren't more people talking about Mustafa Ali being announced for a new Japan professional wrestling match? I get that Nemeth was presented in a flashier way, but I'm super stoked to see him try his thing there. I think people are appropriately talking about Mustafa Ali. I mean, let's be honest, Dolph Ziggler has been around longer. He's done more things than Mustafa Ali. He's sort of seen, I think, by some segment of the fan base of professional wrestling as like a main event type player. He was a main eventer back in WWE's heyday, back in his heyday in WWE. Um, so maybe therein lies the difference. Plus, uh, you know, he showed up in sort of a big deal way in New Japan, sitting ringside uh, at Tokyo Dome, you know, challenging. It was just it was sort of the like you said here, he was presented in a flashier way. If you present somebody in a flashier way, it's going to get people talking. It's, so much of wrestling is presentation. It's production value, man. Ooh, I like this one. Claus Techno says, my question's about a very popular topic around the wrestling fans after the match between Samoa Joe and Hook. What are your thoughts about wrestlers kicking out after one? I'm sorry, kicking out at one after a finishing move, especially if we consider the size difference between the one who gave the finisher and the one taking it. So I understand people were perplexed as to why Hook would kick out of the muscle buster at one and then take a bunch more and seemingly just sort of have the grit to get back up. But here's the thing. In professional wrestling, you got to give everybody something. You got to give him something. And in Hook's case, because he's a smaller dude until he beefs up or like grows six inches, he's always going to be a smaller dude. In which case, what do you do with smaller dudes? You make them resilient. You make them have grit. You give them that underdog mentality where they can kick out of anything until they can't anymore. It's that scrappy David Goliath story, and it doesn't really work if David is a weakling who can't kick out of shit. So you do the big shock moment where he kicks out at one. I'm down with that. I think that's totally fine. I thought Hook looked like a million bucks in that match. He, look, I've been begging AEW to do something with Hook for months now, for like years now, and they finally did something really cool with him. They gave him a badass match against Samoa Joe where he took all sorts of his shit, and then Joe hits him with that muscle buster, and he kicks out a one, and Joe is freaked out about it. That's a great moment. That's a high drama moment. You know, man, my beef with AEW is legitimate. Some of you guys just have the most disingenuous arguments when it comes to AEW. You need to fix that. Luke Q7U says, what is more likely? I don't know how to interpret numbers as letters, people. What is more likely, MJF or Okada in the Rumble? Kazuchika Okada is more likely because MJF, I think he's actually injured. I think he's actually hurt, and I think he's probably already signed a new deal with AEW. That's my guess. So, yeah, I'm going to say uh, Okada is probably more likely in the Rumble, although I don't know. Like, I, I kind of also feel like Okada, he can't go to the Rumble. You got you to gotta build him up first. He can be at WrestleMania, but I don't think the Rumble. And plus, I know there's contractual issues there. Uh, the Rumble's a couple days before his contract gives up. Yes, WWE could get around that by basically, I don't know, asking to, for a solid, offering something in return. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I kind of feel like it's more likely that it's Okada, but I kind of feel like neither guy is going to be in the Rumble, regardless of what LA, uh, uh, LA, Las Vegas uh, betting odds have said. All right, uh, Greg Beast says, has LA Knight's push been halted due to CM Punk? Maybe they're on different brands, though. They're on different brands. So I don't know. I I still think it's possible that LA Knight does Logan Paul 
at WrestleMania? I think that's a possibility. He's not going to be in the Rumble because that's going to be he's going to have that Roman match. But like, you know, has LA Knight's push been? I think LA Knight's push been halted more to AJ Styles and Randy Orton coming back because look, who's in the main event scene there now? It's it's those three guys. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know necessarily. It's been halted though. Like he's still in the main event or the main event title match at the Royal Rumble. He's still in that. I mean, is that a halted push? Maybe he'll do solo at WrestleMania. Hasn't he already? He's already done solo though. Yeah, I don't know what solo's got to do at Mania. Just stand around and do a whole lot of nothing. Brayden Loader says, with the rebrand and re- recent acquisition, do you think TNA has a chance to become the number two promotion in North America? No, no, never, ever, no. You can love TNA. I hope you do. I love TNA. I think it's awesome. I don't really watch it on a regular basis, but I think it's great what they've done. But no, if you don't have the kind of money that Tony Khan has, you're not going to be the number two promotion in America. One of these guys is on the Warner Brothers Discovery Networks of channels. The other one is on Axis. The other one is TNA. You no, know, you've got like 100,000 people watching that show. And the other one has like 800,000 people watching that show. So no, it's impossible. It is impossible for TNA to be the number two promotion in America while AEW and WWE exist. That's not going to happen. There's no way TNA could sell between 75 and 80,000 tickets at Wembley Arena in stadium, sorry, in London. That that cannot happen. That cannot happen. Much love to TNA. They're a strong number three. I don't think there's another company that's, you know, at the number four or less level in America that can claim to be TNA. It's a good spot to be in. It's a really good spot to be in. But no, they don't have billionaire money. They've got millionaire money and multimillionaire money, but it's not billionaire money. So no, they can't be the number two promotion in America. They could be the number one promotion in your heart. And that's a great place to be. And I think they are in that position for a lot of people. A lot of people swear by TNA and they make it their number one. And that is awesome for them. For TNA, from a business perspective, no. They will never be the number two. You can have the best booking ever. But if you're on Axis and the other guys on TNT and TBS, you're not going to be number two. At which point, it's simply just subjective. If you're just talking about, oh, I prefer this one better, that's that's not real. That's not business. That's not real. All right. Uh, Miss Dylan J.H. says, with the news that Okada is leaving New Japan, what would be your top Okada dream match for each major U.S. promotion? For WWE, it would be Gunther. For uh, <laughs> they, they put ACW. I think you mean AEW, but I appreciate that. Uh, for AEW, the C and the E aren't even close to each other. Uh, for AEW, uh, it would be, um, I mean, shit, he's already had all the dream matches there. He's already had all the dream matches there. I don't know who hasn't he fought yet. Has he done Adam Cole one on one? Adam Cole one on one. Once Adam Cole's rested up, I guess it's him. Uh, and then TNA, Josh Alexander. Didn't they do that already? <laughs> they might have done that already. I don't know. Uh, Macklin, <laughs> Johnny Swinger. That's my answer. It's Johnny Swinger. By God, I'd love to see Okada give Johnny Swinger a five-star match. That'd be amazing. Rich Pears All, or Rich Pierce All, says, uh, what do you see f- uh, for C. Okada's ceiling being in the U.S., whichever company he winds up in? In WWE, I think his ceiling is world heavyweight champion, but maybe not universal champion, but then after Roman, the, the, it's wide open. If he's wildly over, sure, why not? The the Roman title. Uh, in AEW, I, d- I don't have faith that they could... Tra- <laughs> I'm going to get fucking killed in the comments. I don't have faith that AEW can treat him good enough to be their world champion, to get people to buy in to him being their world champion. I just don't, I don't have faith in them. I really don't. I don't. They're doing a great job with Joe right now. But Joe, like Joe, it's like a, 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 you know, a book that writes itself, basically. It's a story that writes itself. Joe is just Joe. Everybody loves Joe. That's why he's popping ratings. 
Not a lot of effort behind that one. <laughs> it's just Samoa Joe. He's fucking awesome. So, of course, he's going to make for a great AEW champion. But you got to put a little bit of effort in to get this guy over, to get Okada over. If he's going to come over here, you got to make him, and, and people are going to go crazy for him. You got you can't just let him do his thing. You got to put a little bit of effort into building stories and stuff like that around the guy. Oh, I'm going to get killed today. I'm going to get killed. Lord Blake Whitehouse says, was Kevin Dunn underappreciated? Uh, he was both trash and gold. I'll be honest with you. It's crazy. I somebody can be both things. He both held back the presentation of WWE, and he also was really good at capturing moments in WWE. When you think about like all those great WrestleMania moments, Kofi Mania, Dan, the Yes Movement, uh, Becky Main Eventing, all that stuff, the language that was being told to elevate the emotions in those scenes were Kevin Dunn. That's what it was. It was his style of, of, of storytelling when it comes to capturing those moments. And I think WWE, it, like for the first couple of weeks anyways, it seems like they're going to be fine without him. And in fact, they're opening up the way they present their show. And I think that's great. That's what they, you know, that's what he should have been doing in the first place. But um, yeah, it remains to be seen whether those high dramatic moments are going to be captured similarly to the way he was able to do it because pro wrestling is a very unique thing and you would almost need somebody from like theater, you know, like people filming theater to do that. I don't know. I'm sure it maybe it's easier than all that, but you know, uh, we'll, we'll find out. I think it's more. We'll find out. I think that's what it is. So yeah, I think, I think Kevin Dunn was good when he was, when he was good, but he was trash when he was awful. I'm talking about those smash cuts and the zooms and all that bullshit. Uh, Stu Wallbaum says, do you feel Nick Nemeth has the potential to have a complete career resurgence after being released by WWE, much like how Cody and Cardona did? I think more along the lines of Cardona than Cody. Cody was really young. I think when he was let go or when he asked for his release and spent some really good years doing shit that nobody had done before. And then came back into basically a brand new brand a brand new entity i don't know that dolph ziggler can do that i really don't i think that he could turn things kind of upside down like matt cardona did it matt cardona is amazing i think he's absolutely great but i'm not going to claim that cardona can go back to wwe as the character he is and, and be a world champion i don't i don't really see that but i think ziggler can have like a cardona ask run and i think it'd be really awesome i'm looking forward to seeing hopefully he does some cool shit why do i like Says, uh, with general managers back on the shows, do you think Triple H will revert back to the draft style of 2016 where GMs chose their roster? Yeah, I hope so. I think they, I think he will, too. I think it'll be cool. Oh, this is a great question. Kane is 2020. Says, uh, how does time work in wrestling? It's kind of arbitrary. It seems like they can't communicate with each other except in an arena, yet they have things happen between shows and no time has passed. Yeah, I know. It's one of those weird wrestling tropes. It's a weird convention of wrestling. People don't talk when they're not on TV. It's weird. User on nine I E two oh, the fuck with these names, man. A few weeks off and hindsight being 2020. Uh, did the Continental Classic tournament really do anything for any of the wrestlers in it? Or are they back on back to or below the same trajectory they were because of the booking? I'm sorry I messed up your name. What an excellent question and a wonderfully worded question as well. User own nine I eat. I don't know what that says. Um yeah, it's a great question. That's a great question. Did it do anything for any of the wrestlers in it? I kind of feel like it moved along Swerve Strickland. I think it kept his momentum going. It didn't halt his momentum. I thought he had a good showing in the Continental Classic. I think, look, obviously there were no Stone Cold Steve Austin 316 moments um, there. Uh, did it make any new, I mean, yeah, I think it, I think it elevated Eddie from bum to sort of king of the bums. I think it, ele I think it helped Eddie. I think it helped Eddie. He put up the titles that he had and he got them back and he got an extra one on the way back. So put him up, put him up by one title by, by one third. John O Davies says, Hey Steve, what are the chances of AEW being canceled as a Brit who's not familiar with us television networks? How just how bad are the writings? Jeez, but well, they're not great. They're not very. They're not great. Last weekend was really bad, but then they're up against like I don't know a streaming NFL game, and that did really really good numbers. And they also were against like a million wrestling things. Uh, yeah, Punk being gone from Collision isn't great. It's 
not great for the show. And I'll be honest with you, last week's collision kind of dog shit. Like they, they look. There's always good matches, but like it didn't really move a whole lot of stories. Um, I don't know what tonight's is going to be like. I'm I'm filming this at three o'clock Pacific time on Saturday, so this is probably going to go up by five by when coll- the new collision starts. Um, the chance of it being canceled, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I would think small, but I'll be honest with you, it might help AEW to to get rid of collision. Probably not. People are paid from that. I would that would suck if it was if it was canceled, but it also wouldn't surprise me. It's just it's it's in a the worst time spot. I thought Rampage was in a bad time spot. Collision might be worse because one day a month, one week a month, it's up against a WWE premium live event. And then like on pay-per-view uh months, it's like, I don't know, it's it's weird how they do that too sometimes. Like it's gotta be in a different spot. And then when there's sports, it's gotta be in a different spot. It's just a really bad, bad time spot. They should just put it on a different Warner's network and put it on a Thursday. Have impact move. Have TNA move. Guess what? Now you're Tuesday night action. All right. I think I saw this one last week. I didn't answer it, so I'm going to answer it this wing this week. For A King 2524 says, What defunct wrestling promotion would you bring back? Mine would be Lucha Underground. I don't know, man, because like I feel like all the wrestling promotions in the country and around the world are sort of doing all this. Like, what other defunct wrestling promotions really are there? There's ECW. I don't know. Jim Crockett promotions. That's what I would bring back. Something that does some cool studio wrestling. But I think NWA does that. But it's got the NWA isn't really for me. Um, I don't know. Something like ECW would be cool, but not like I don't need like blood and gore and death and stuff like that, man. I just give me a good solid one one hour weekly television show, uh, kind of like NXT. You know what? NXT Black and Gold pre twenty nineteen when it was one hour on the network and that's all it was. That's all it had to be. Bring that back. Put it in a warehouse. How about no Wrestling Society X? That should come back because you need more CG explosion explosions when people fall into stuff. That that's what you got to do. Anyways, hey, you know what? That was a lively episode. I'm probably gonna get killed by the AW sweaties in the comments. I just wanted to be better, man. I just wanted to be. I just want. I want them to do well. I want them to succeed. And I feel like if 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 they get Okada and they make a big big deal about him and he succeeds and we all succeed, then we're all happy. That's all I want, man. Anyways, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Until next time, I'll see you around.